Hello friends, welcome to the course Essentials of uh, Data Science with R Software 2, where we are trying to understand the basic concepts of uh, sampling theory and linear regression analysis. And in this module, we are going to continue with the topic of simple random sampling with R software. So you may recall that in the earlier lecture, uh, we had uh, considered the packages sample. And I had illustrated that how one can draw different types of uh, samples using simple random sampling with and without replacement. But there, um, what I did, I had defined a data vector as a population. And from there, I was trying to, uh, to sample the observation of the required uh, numbers. Now, in case if I try to extend it more and uh, try to view this package from the point of view of uh, data science, then you can consider that usually whenever a data is collected, it is not usually on the single variable, but that is in the form of some table where there can be more than one variables and uh, the data on all such variable is considered. For example, if you try to consider the same example of uh, online shopping, whenever a person creates uh, the login for the online shopping on that website, the person has to give different types of information. That can be name, address, telephone number, age and some other aspects. So, usually the data will be available in some tabular format. The format can be in the form of table or data frame or anything else. And the objective is to choose one of the column of that data set and to select a sample from that column only. For example, suppose I uh, want to select a column where the age of persons are mentioned. So, from that big data set, I want to choose a particular column related to the age and then from those ages, I would like to draw a sample. So, here in this case, my population will be defined as the data which has already been collected through some online automated resources. Uh, but that data, but that data might be of very huge size and, and I would like to draw a sample from there. So, this is the question which I would like to address today using the sampling package sample, right. Okay. But uh, before that, let us quickly have a review of the symbols and notations. And uh, I would also try to address that what are the meanings and interpretation of these symbols. So, we are going to use here following symbols, capital N, as we had discussed earlier, th this is going to, to indicate the population size, that is the total number of sampling units in the population. Similarly, small n, that is our sample size, which is the uh, total number of sampling units in the sample. Now, there are two symbols, capital Y and a small y. So, here one has to be careful. Sometimes students get confused with the symbols and uh, so, whenever I am trying to use here the symbol capital y, that is the capital the letter alphabet, that is going to denote a random variable and under the setup of simple random sampling, this is going to indicate the characteristic under a study. For example, if I have a data set here, say on several variable, suppose here some identification tag is given, say, say roll number of the students. Then there are here marks in say physics, marks in mathematics and marks in chemistry and those marks are given over here, right. So, in this case, suppose I want to 
uh, sample the observations on the marks on physics, then my y is, is going to be the marks in physics. And if I want to, to study the marks in mathematics, then my y is going to be the marks in mathematics. And now, under this variable, there are observation. For example, there are some students to number 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And suppose, there are capital n number of students. So, now, the value of capital Y for those students, this is denoted by capital Y i. So, this is essentially the value of the characteristic for the ith unit in the population. So, for example, suppose, suppose I say that I am considering the height of the students. So, now, suppose there are say here 1, 2 up to here n number of students. So, the value of the height for the first student that will be denoted by y 1, the value of the height for the second student that will be denoted by y 2 and similarly, the height of the capital nth student will be denoted by capital y n. So, these are some numerical values. Now, from this population, I try to draw here a simple random sample in general as sample, but since we are considering here only the simple random sampling. So, I will say this is a simple random sample, otherwise this definition is valid for, for all types of sampling scheme in the further lectures. Now, some of these y i s will be selected in this sample and we are assuming here that we want to draw a small n number of units in the sample. That means, out of this capital N number of values y 1, y 2, capital Y n, I want to choose here some y's which are n in number. So, number of y's will be equal to small n. Now, those y i's, those capital Y i's which are going to be selected in the sample and which are in a small n numbers, their values will be denoted by a small y i. So, this is essentially the value of the characteristic for the i s unit in the sample. Now, here comes a confusion. Now, in this population, there will be units like y 1, y 2, there will be some small y n, then small y n plus 1 and say and y capital N, because small n will always be smaller than capital N. Sometimes, students try to think that uh, we are trying to choose only first small n number of values of variable. This is wrong this is a wrong interpretation. So, now, in order to explain this confusion, let me try to take here a small example and from there, I will try to make it more clear. So, suppose y is the height of the students in the class and suppose there are 10 students in the class. So, my population size is here capital N is equal to 10. And suppose I want to draw here a sample of size small n, which is equal to 3. So, I want to draw, draw 3 units out of 10 units. So, now I have here 2 types of no, uh, notations. One will be here capital Y i and another will be here a small y i. So, capital Y i is going to be the height of the i th student in the population. So, here i will be going from 1 to up to here 10. So, that means, student number 1, student number 2 and student number 10 and their heights. Now, from this capital Y i, I am going to draw here only 3 observations and those 3 observation can be any 3 values out of y 1, y 2, y 10. Why I am calling it any 3, because we had uh, learned earlier that if you are trying to use the without replacement S R S W O R, then the total number of samples are going to be 10 C 3 and 
in case if you try to uh, use here with replacement, then the total number of samples are going are going to be 10 raise to the power of here 3. Let me write here more clearly 10 choose 3 or 10 to the power of here 3. So, these many samples you are going to obtain under W O R or W R. So, now you are going to choose one of the sample over here and this value which you are going to choose here I am writing here say a small y i where i goes from 1 to 3. Now, the, the confusion comes here that in this case I am trying to take here i goes from 1 to 10, but in, but in the second case in case of a small y i I am trying to take the values say i goes from 1 to 3. So, that is why sometimes students get confused that how the range is changing, but remember one thing these are the population value and these are the sample value. For example, my sample can be the y 1 say y 3 and here y 5. So, in or the sample can be y 1, y 5, y 10 or even my sample can be y 1, y 2, y 3. So, these are the three values from the population which are obtained here. Now, what I am doing how this how these symbols are changing. Now, if you try to take here the first sample. So, I have drawn here capital y 1. So, now this becomes my here a small y 1. Then I have taken capital y 3 the height of the third student this becomes my here a small y 2. And then I have taken here the height of the fifth student. So, this becomes my here y 3. Now, in the second sample I have taken here the first value. So, this remains as here say a small y 1. Then I choose fifth value. So, now this becomes here y 2 and then I choose third value which is here that height of the tenth student. So, this becomes here y 3. So, now you can see here y 5 and y 5 both are chosen, but in the first sample this is denoted by y 3 and in the second case it is denoted by small y 2. And it is also possible that uh, that whatever are the three whatever are the first three three values they are just obtained as such. So, in this case capital y 1 will become a small y 1, capital y 2 will become a small y 2, capital y 3 will become a small y 3. Right. So, first for the heights of the first three student they are simply the the they are also in the sample. Okay. So, now suppose uh, uh, the values of height of the students in the population and their names are now given in this table. So, I am using here the names here A, B, C, D up to here J. There are 10 students that is their name and the uh, y i is my height of the ith student. So, this is my first student. So, the height of the first student is is a capital Y 1 is equal to 151 centimeters. Height of the second student is capital Y 2 is equal to 152 centimeter. Height of the third student is Y 3 is equal to 153 centimeter and similarly, the height of the tenth student is capital Y 10 is equal to 160 centimeter. Okay, just for the sake of understanding and you do not uh, forget what is your population and what are the value of the unit. What I have done here that I have taken the name of the students in the order of alphabets. Then I have defined the units here y 1, y 2, y 10 and their corresponding heights are starting from 151, 1, 152 up to here 159. So, that means the first value will correspond to 151, second value correspond to 152, third value correspond to 153 and similarly, the ninth value correspond to here 159 and tenth value corresponds to 160. So, it is easy for you to remember that if I say that capital Y 6 is selected that means, 156 value has been selected. Okay. So, now you can see here that uh, these are my population values. These are my population values.
So, I have denoted capital Y to be the height and these are the values are capital Y 1, capital Y 10. Now, I try to do one thing that I would like to draw here a sample of size 3. So, now this is small y i, this is going to be the height of the ith student which is selected in the sample. This is very important to, to keep in mind. So, now suppose in my sample we take, um, uh, uh, take the help of random number tables or software whatever it is. Suppose the three numbers which you select are 3, 7 and 9. That means, the third, seventh and ninth students are going to be in my sample. So, that means, the third student whose height is 153 centimeter, the seventh student whose height is 157 centimeter and the ninth student whose height is 159 centimeter will be in my sample and the first observation will be denoted by a small y 1 which is the value of capital Y 3. Similarly, the second observation will be denoted by here a small y 2 which is essentially the value of the y 7. And thirdly, the third value in the sample that is denoted by y 3 which is essentially the ninth value of the student in the population. So, now I hope that after this explanation there should not be any confusion in the notations and symbols of a small y capital Y small y i capital y i. Now, I come to my job, where I would like to draw a sample. So, now you can consider here suppose this is the data which is given to us and you can imagine that this data is very huge means although I have taken a very small value to explain you, but you can imagine that this is a very big data set which you just cannot see from your eyes. And suppose uh, there are many more variables here also means there can be weight, there can be eight, age and whatever you want. And your objective is that out of this big data set, you want to choose here one particular column, one particular variable and you would like to draw the sample from this population. The population is the height of the students. So, now I am considering here two columns, one is here name of the student and say another is the height of the student. And what I am going to do from this given data set, I will try to draw a sample of the name of the students and a sample of the height of the students. Okay. So, now first uh, we have to define this uh, data set. So, well I am not uh, doing here, but I had uh, done it in the introductory part of our software that how to create a data frame. So, there can be a CSV file, there can be a Excel file or whatever it is this data will be given to us. So, now since we are creating the data, so let me try to create this data into the format of a data frame. So, I have entered here the heights in this uh, data vector name in this data vector as a name and then I am trying to create here a data frame and, uh, and that we had discussed that in order to create a data frame the command is data dot frame and inside the parenthesis you have to write all the variables. And one condition in defining the data frame is that all the variables should be of the same length. So, this is possible here because height and name they are of the length 10. Okay, so, I do this thing and then means uh, the data frame which has been renamed as uh, height data it will look like this. I will try to show you on the R console also, but this will look like this. And we also had discussed earlier that if you want to take out the data only on one of the variables say for example, name or say height, then the, uh, can the command here is you try to write down the name of the data frame and then dollar and then name of the variable this is the rule. So, what I try to do here because for the sake of illustration, I try to take out this data set on the name of the students and I try to store it here as a names n a m e s whereas, the variable name is name. So, the name of the data frame is height data dollar and then name, name is coming from here. Okay, so, now if you try to see you will get this data. So, definitely this is uh, a factor data uh, in the form of a b c d. 
So, it will come like this and similarly, the height is a quantitative variable. So, uh, so I try to uh, define here a name heights. So, what I have done? I simply have added s in the variable names. So, this will be the name of the data frame height data dollar and then the name of the variable height and this data will come like this. Okay, and here is the screenshot means uh, at the moment you can be sure that uh, uh, that this will work right. Okay. Now, I come to drawing the of the sample. So, in this case once you have stored the variable names in your R console as names or height, then the life becomes very simple. You simply have to use the command sample and wherever you had given the data vector x, there you have to give the name of the variable. So, for example, suppose we want to draw a sample in terms of the names of the students or name names of the persons. So, I will simply write here the, the command to draw the sample, sample s a m p l e. Then earlier we had written here x, but now I am writing here the name of the variable in which the data has been stored, which is here names n a m e s. And suppose I want to draw a sample of size 5, so I give here size is equal to 5 and then suppose I want here simple random sampling without a replacement, so I use here replace is equal to false. And then if you try to execute it, for example, here is one out one such outcome and you can see here that we have got here the names of five students G F A B H and this is telling that what are the labels in which the data is available. Okay. Now, suppose uh, I decide that okay, I want to have the um, data in terms of heights of the person. So, what I have to do? I simply have to use the same command, but now instead of the variable name names, I can use here another variable name heights and then the size of the sample which is here 5 and then SRS WOR which is replace equal to false and once you try to use this command over here you will get this type of say outcome. Say you are getting here 152, 156, 154, 155, 158. So that means the the second unit, which I can identify from the third digit, sixth unit, fourth unit, fifth unit, and eighth unit have come to your sample. And now here is the the screenshot. So now before uh, going into the further details, let me first try to show you it on the R console. Okay. So first let me create the data frame. So, I copy this commands over here to save the time, but I would request you to at least type the data with your own hand, because then you will be making couple of uh, mistakes and once you make those mistakes, you will understand that where you have to be careful. Right. So, you can see here, uh, I have stored the values of heights, name, and then the I have created the data frame over here and this data frame looks like this. And from here, if I try to store uh, uh, call the data on names, so this is going to be uh, renamed as names and this is your here name of the data frame, height data followed by dollar and then name. And you can see here. So, you can see here the data under the, this here names column, try to observe my cursor. This is here given here like this and similarly, if I try to take here the data on heights. So, I add here heights is equal to height data dollar heights and you can see here that this data is stored here. You can see whatever is the data under this height column here, we, this data is here. So, now I try to execute my sample commands. Right. Okay. So, now I try to suppose I want to take here a sample of here with, with respect to names. So, I will say here try to take here 
sample of size 5 from the names you can see here that these names are here. Yeah, obviously means uh, this outcome will not uh, match with the outcome which is uh, given in my slides, because this is a random number generations. So, every time you generate it with the probability that it will be repeated so soon that is very, very less. And similarly, if you want to have a sample of size here 8, you can see here this will come out to be of a different sample of size 8. Right. And in case now, suppose if you want to have this sample with respect to heights. So, I try to use the same command over here and I use here the variable height. So, you can see here now, this will draw a sample of size here 8 like this. And if you try to repeat it, this will be here like this. Right. And if you try to see here size is equal to see here 12, you will get an error that we discussed in the last lecture, because it is simple and sampling without replacement. So, the sample size cannot exceed the population size. Well, okay. now you can see that it is not so difficult, which earlier looks to be. So, now I try to consider the SRS W R and uh, try to solve the same problem that we have the same data set, but uh, now if we would like to draw the sample by simple random sampling with the replacement. So, suppose I want to draw the sample with, with respect to the names of the person. So, I have to use the same command, the only difference will be here that the replace will become here true. And once you try to do it here, you will get here this type of outcome and you can see here that these two values f and f, they are being repeated here. Similarly, if you try to obtain here a size sample of size 8, then use the same command except that you change the size is equal to 8 and you can see here, this is the outcome, where you can see here c is being repeated 2 times, d is being repeated 2 times and so on and the total number of sample sizes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We do the same exercise once again that now we would like to draw the sample with respect to the heights of the person or height of the student. So, I simply have to use the same command sample and I have to change the name of the variable here to be heights, size is your choice. Suppose, we are uh, we would like to find here a sample of size 5. So, size is equal to 5 and then you have to make here one change here replace is equal to true and you can get uh, this type of outcome and you can see here that this value 155 is being repeated 2 times. Similarly, if you want to have a sample of size 8, then the one possible outcome is uh, like this, where you can see here this value 153 is being repeated 2 times, 156 is being repeated 2 times and so on. So, this is your SRS W R and the screenshot corresponding to this observation, you can see here it is given here, where I am trying to give all these outcomes of names and heights. Now, let us try to do the same exercise on the R console over here. I try to clear my data and then just for your information, I will keep this data before your eyes. So, it was height data. Right. And uh, now, what we have to do? I have to use the same command. Suppose, I want to find uh, a sample of here names and suppose, I want to find here a sample of size 5. So, I have to give write down sample name size equal to 5 and now, replace uh, will be here true. So, you can see here that this is here the size 5 and you see you can see here very surprisingly 4 times E has been repeated. Right. Well, legally you are correct and similarly, if you try to repeat it once again, then you can see here the h is repeated only 2 times and if you try to obtain here a sample of size 8 for the names, it will be something like this. And similarly, if you want to have the sample on the heights, suppose you want to have sample of size 8. So, by SRS W R. So, you can see here, this is here, here the outcome and uh, yeah, surprisingly once again, no value is getting here repeated. 
So now if you try to look at only these values, can you really judge whether this data is from the SRS WR or WOR? But if you try to repeat it, possibly you can see here in the next outcome, this 157 has been repeated here. 153 is also repeated here two times and so on. Right. So, you can see that it is not really difficult to handle the big databases. In data sciences, whatever the data has been collected, that is stored automatically in some format. Those can be text file, though, uh, uh, they can be some, uh, some spreadsheets or they can be some comma separated value files, CSV files, but they are going to be very, very huge. The number of variables will also be very, very large. And usually you will not be interested in um, sampling only one or two or something like this. So, now this uh, lecture gives you an idea that how you can sample from the required column or the required subsection of the data set. Now, the next question is this, this is possible that uh, once you have selected some values on a given variable, you would like to obtain the entire data set corresponding to those values. That means, suppose I have obtained here the, uh, the name of the student as say here A and B in my sample. So, now I would like to have the complete row corresponding to the data of student A and B. Those things are not difficult. In R, all these uh, uh, manipulations related to the data values, tabular values, they are possible. Well, this is not the place where I can discuss all the things, that because that is simply related to choosing some of the rows or columns of a data frame or a, or a particular type of, of a file inside the R. So, for that my recommendation will be that you try to look into the R software and help and how do you handle different types of files and how do you do different types of data manipulation. So, that will complete your objective, but I have given you an idea, I have initiated the thought process and I also have given you a hint that how you can start, how you can proceed. Well, there can be different approaches, but this is one possible way. So, you try to look into these things and try to take some more example. Although, I am not doing here, but I request you that you try to take a small uh, table, then try to select some values and try to select the entire rows or the entire data corresponding to those selected sample values. So, you practice and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.